Okay guys, so in today's video, we're finally gonna be catching up with Intel's latest generation of graphics card with the Interlark B580. I absolutely love Interlark graphics cards. I thought it was amazing when they came out. So to be able to get our hands on a second generation, all thanks to a member of this channel, it's gonna be awesome to see what this card can do. Now, just over two years ago, Intel released their first generation of Interlark graphics cards when they actually joined the GPU race, which was awesome for everybody to see because a third player was hopefully some competition and hopefully it would bring down prices. But unfortunately, that never really happened. The two major brands, AMD and Nvidia, continued to, to uh, increase their prices, but Intel actually stayed quite low, to be honest. Even their latest generation won't cost you an arm and a leg, although getting stock is probably a little bit difficult. The card that we've got today is the Interlark B580, and we have to thank one of our YouTube channel members for this because we just simply could not find one in stock, and when they were in stock, we just weren't quick enough to be able to purchase, but they actually managed to find one. They purchased it for us and sent it across, and that is absolutely awesome. So a big thank you to them. They actually purchased this card because they felt that it wasn't right that we didn't have one because we've got the A770 LE model. We've got the A750 LE model. It's kind of creating a little bit of a collection, really. As far as the cards go, Intel have continued on with their fantastic designs and premium kind of looks and feels. Even the box itself is absolutely amazing. It's slightly different design to the original box, but it does have an overlay this time. We didn't have that before. It was just a very simple opening box and then we've got the uh, inside cardboard box i'm sure a lot of people will lose the overlay and probably keep this one around but as you open it up you can actually see that it actually lifts the slider here and your graphics card is just nicely presented in there that means that you actually get this real premium feel to opening up a graphics card which is awesome because that's one thing that intel really gave us on the last generation that other manufacturers are just not really bothering with anymore. That premium look and feel continues on into the cards. One of the biggest things that I praised Intel graphics cards for on the A series was, of course, their LE model design. I think they look absolutely beautiful and they continued it on with the B series as well. In actual fact, inside of this uh, beautiful case in here, the card isn't actually that long. You can see the power connection here in the middle and that's pretty much where the card ends, but they continue to extend it on to make the cards look really nice. They have this really nice sleek design. They've improved the fans. This one is a dual fan configuration they've got all the ports that you would need and then when you flip it over you've got the intel arc b580 branding on the back just like you did with the others with this nice opening on here which is a, a kind of a blow through with your fan system a lot of graphics cards do that nowadays and intel of course have adopted it because clearly it works and they've managed to do it in such a nice way it's such a nice clean design of course the b580 is not going to be the fastest uh, graphics card that intel will release on the uh, second generation there are rumors that they're going to be lining up other graphics cards too but this one is actually a great start particularly for the money that you will pay when it comes to the specifications the interlock b580 uses the xe2 architecture that is a better architecture or a newer architecture over the original version it has a base clock speed of 2670 megahertz that's a huge increase over the original a580 and a boost clock speed of 2670 megahertz as well again another big increase over the original a580 there it has 2560 shaders but the more importantly it does come with 12 gigabytes of gddr6 with a memory bus of 192 bit it uses a pci gen 4x8 interface and it roughly has a tdp of around 190 watts and if you can actually find them in stock anywhere at the msrp you will pay around 249 dollars translating that to the uk it's around 298 pounds which is exactly what the uh, youtube member paid for this card so they managed to find an in-stock LE model at the MSRP price which actually kind of makes it one of the cheapest graphics cards or one of the cheapest new generation graphics cards that are on the market which is absolutely fantastic because it means Intel are still supporting the budget gamers. One of the biggest benefits to the whole generation, in my opinion, though, is that Intel have adopted a higher VRAM amount. This card coming with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is more than enough for most games. And the B570 coming with 10 gigabyte means that there's no more 8 gigabyte cards, which everyone's complaining about at the moment. And you're managing to pick them up for a reasonable price as well. So I think Intel are winning again this generation when it comes to card looks, particularly of the LE models. They look fantastic. They're very 
light because there's actually not a lot in there, but they still put the effort in. You even still get the uh, glow up Intel Arc logo, which looks fantastic in a the system. They've also got some fantastic pricing, something that people can actually afford instead of these five to six to seven to eight hundred pound graphics cards, which some of them are just clearly not worth it. But of course, this is only worth it if it actually performs that way. And to find that out, we've been doing some testing. So let's take a look at a bunch of benchmarks and see how well this card performs. Now, of course, all of our testing was done in our benchroom system, which does have an AMD Ryzen 7 9800XCD. That is one of the fastest CPUs that you can buy. And we all know that the Intel Arcs do suffer a little bit when you go to an older CPU. But for now, we're going to be looking at those results because it's going to give the best picture for the card. And when it comes to gaming in 1080p, the card performs exceptionally well. The Intel Arc B580 struggles mostly on games like Alan Wake 2, where we only managed to get an average of 56 frames per second with a 1% low of 42. Again, this is in 1080p with a high quality presets so even though it's lower than all of the others on the chart 
it still means that the game is completely playable on this graphics card so if you are somebody that is on a very tight budget and you want to pick up a new generation card this will still get the job done and of course you can still activate things like fsr and that to be able to boost over atom fall is an absolutely brand new title where you can manage to get an average of 150 frames per second with a one percent low of 110 in 1080p with a high quality preset the game looks and plays absolutely fantastic with that and we pretty much see a similar picture across the board cyberpunk 2077 getting way over 100 frames per second dead island 2 doom eternal of course showing how really well optimized that game is getting nearly 300 frames per second indiana jones is a pretty demanding title but absolutely no issues in 1080p with a high preset with the interlock b580 where we managed to get an average of 89 frames per second with a one percent low of 64 and again we just continue to see this pattern all the way down the games list probably the games like space marine 2 and stalker 2 do suffer a little on the one percent lows but they are still within playable frame rates so again in 1080p this card is absolutely fantastic moving up to 1440p we can see that everything just drops slightly here but we still get a pretty decent average across all of the games alan wake 2 again suffering here now only getting an average of 36 frames per second with a one percent low of 26 i probably wouldn't advise you playing that game in this configuration because that's really going to take away from the experience but everything else is pretty much over 60 fps slight low one percent lows on space marine 2 of around 31 which makes the game touch and go and a very similar picture with stalker 2 but generally those games are more than playable in 1440p and if you just lower that quality preset down to a medium those will all be boosted up anyway so the card looks great in 1080p it looks great in 1440p and you're going to get a pretty decent experience across both although i would probably project this card more towards the 1080p resolution particularly for the latest titles so we know that the interlock b580 can actually game and it can play all of the latest games and you will get a pretty decent experience some of them i would advise you go for 1080p resolution or maybe 1440p and drop the uh, quality preset down to medium there's a the beauty of pc gaming you can customize whichever way you want to go but the card will actually manage to achieve some pretty decent average frame rates so everything looks good from there but how well did it compare to the original generation now the only cards that we've got to compare this to is the a770 and the a750 so i did a little bit of a comparison just to see what kind of uplift you get even though you're going down a slight tier in terms of graphics card Sticking to a 1080p resolution and a high quality preset for our comparison testing, let's start with the games where we saw the lowest increase overall. In Alan Wake 2, there was no surprise here with the original A series cards, both the A770 and A750 managing to achieve only around 50 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 40. Those cards actually perform very similar in this game and it's probably a little bit low really for the performance they should be getting. But with the Intel Arc B580, you will see around a 12% increase here. That's actually not too bad considering that we are a tier down and we are a generation along so that's okay it just wasn't one of the biggest that we saw we saw a very similar picture with dead island 2 with the original a series cards like the a770 only managing to achieve around 132 frames per second on average with a one percent low of 81 but with the new intel arc b580 we managed to see an increase of around six percent that card now achieving around 140 frames per second with a 1% low of 87. Technically, in terms of frames per second, you probably won't see much in terms of experience here, but it does show that the card is going in the right direction. And then we have the games where we saw a huge increase in performance. Games like Space Marine 2, the Intel Arc B580, storms ahead with 150% increase over the Intel Arc A770. The older cards in this game really do seem to struggle, actually managing to achieve pretty much the same result in both the A770 and A750, which really goes to show that the game doesn't play well with intel graphics cards except when it comes to the new one the intel b580 now managing to achieve an astonishing average of around 93 frames per second on average with a one percent low of 48 just takes that game from unplayable to completely playable in one generational leap that is an amazing result to see and we have even more another game where we saw a huge improvement in terms of performance was spider-man remastered okay this game is a slightly older game now and don't get me wrong the original a series cards would actually play the game perfectly fine the original arc a750 you would manage to achieve around 94 frames per second on average with a one percent low of 56 and the intel arc a770 managing to achieve around an average of 101 frames per second with a one percent low of 68 both mean that the game is more than playable on those cards but when we look at the b580 we saw an increase of around 86 percent that actually takes this game into the high fps experiences here even though the one percent lows were not quite there but it just goes to show that the newest generation from intel are really starting to show 
shine. Stalker 2 on the B580 really did surprise me here because it is a very demanding game and it is extremely new, but the Interlark B580 managed to get a 100% increase over the original generations. The Interlark A770 only managing to achieve around 42 frames per second with a 1% low of 28 meant that the game was kind of playable. You could get away with it at 1080p, but you really did need to lower that quality preset, but not at all with the B580 now managing to achieve around 84 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 48. For those of you out there that actually like this game and you still want to play it on a budget, this is probably the card that you want to go for because that is actually an amazing result. Across all of the games that we tested for our comparative testing, the Interlark B580 actually saw an increase of around 40% on average. That is above the Interlark A770, which is amazing to see. And it really does go to show that Intel are making some pretty decent progress generation to generation. So there we have it, the Interlock B580 is more than capable at 1080p and 4040p, even for the, some of the latest and greatest titles, and it, it offers a huge improvement over the original generations, including the Interlock A770, which was an actually, it was an okay graphics card, to be honest. It had reasonable power, it had loads of VRAM, and it offered gamers a good 1080p experience. But Intel are making some significant improvements, and I really can't wait to see what some of their higher tier cards are going to be able to do. Overall, I think so far, Intel have done a fantastic job of their second generation. The B580 is really showing us that even at the low price of less than £300, you can still get a graphics card that will game at 1080p and 1440p and play all of the latest games these cards will still ray trace they'll do all the fancy kind of stuff so they are definitely worth checking out if you are on a budget at the time of filming this video no other brand is really offering a card at this price range so it's really hard to actually compare out i'm sure if we compared it against some older generation cards from amd or nvidia we'd probably see some like for like there but these are actually really fun to play with and they're getting better and better all the time. If the B series actually improved like the A series did, we could see a near doubling in terms of performance on these cards, although they've probably fixed most of the driver issues now, so that's most likely not going to happen. But we should see some kind of improvement like we do with all graphics cards as well. I'm actually super impressed with the job that Intel have done so far. I think they should continue on and I can't wait to see the latest generation graphics cards. I also can't wait to put this in another system and do some more testing. We've got loads of testing that we want to do on it so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to catch that. Also let me know in the comments below if you have an Intel Art graphics card which model are you using an A series a B series It'd be also nice to know what kind of games you're playing and what kind of uh, experience you're getting as well because I'd like to keep testing them and see what they can actually do and where they kind of fall over as well to let other people know. And But overall, that actually brings us to the end of our look or our initial look at the Interlock B580. And I'm sure I'll catch you guys in the next one.